Now, in this video, we're going to see how to deal with the equation when there's more than one variable, and your goal is to solve for one of those variables. Now, there's different points in, in math where you're going to have to do that, some in calculus where you're going to have to simplify for constraint equations, or in sometimes when you're doing a system of equations, you want to substitute, you're going to have to solve for one variable. So this is just building that skill of how do you take an equation with more than one variable and isolate for one of them. And the good news is the process is the exact same as solving for a variable in general. The key is whatever variable you're not solving for, treat it no differently than you treat a constant. Treat it no differently than you treat the number 10 or something. So let's take a look at this first equation. What if our goal was to solve for p? So a question says, you want to solve for p and this equation. Well, let's see. What we can do is our goal is to isolate p by itself. So looking at this, for these four terms, only one of them has a p, so we're all good. So any term without a p, we want to take to the other side. So we're going to subtract 15q from both sides of this equation. And so we're going to be left with 4p equals, subtracting 15q, we have negative q here minus another 15q is going to be so just 20 as is, and then minus 16q. And final step, divide both sides by 4 to get rid of that in front of the p. And 20 divided by 4 is 5. And 16 divided by 4 is, well, 4. And so there you have it. So that would be your equation. What if, on the other hand, for this problem, you were asked to solve for q? Well, now you want q by itself on one side, right? So there's many equally correct ways to go about it. But one thing is to say, all right, I want to keep this q on this side, so I'm going to subtract the 4p now. So I have 15q, and I subtracted the 4p, so I have 20 minus q, but then minus the 4p. Oh, wait, but there's a q on this side too, and I want to bring all the q's by itself. So I'm going to add q to both sides to make that 16q equals 20 minus 4p. And final step, divide both sides by 16. So I get q equals 20 minus 4p all over 16. Now you could split this up, of course, if you wanted to, and say 20 over 16 minus 4p over 16, same thing. Either way, uh, this is what you get. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say this is your problem. This, by the way, is the formula of the area of a trapezoid. Well, let's say you wanted to solve for b2. That's what the question is. Solve for b2 in this formula. Now, again, our goal, big picture goal, is we want to get all the terms with the b2 by itself on one side and all the terms without a b2 on the other side and then solve for b2. Now, here it looks weird because this parentheses. So, again, whenever you have these parentheses, one strategy is always to think, you know, I'm going to distribute things and that way I can look at each term on its own. Uh, now, you could distribute this to both things here. But a better strategy here, one that will save time, again, whenever something's multiplied to the whole thing, uh, you can divide both sides by that thing, right, just to get rid of it if our goal is to isolate b2. So one thing we can do to both sides here is we can divide by this 1 half h. And an easier way to even further do that is to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the half. So let's first do that. Let's multiply both sides by 2. So then that's 2a equals, and the half times 2 makes the half go away, so h times b1 plus b2. Then I can get rid of the h by dividing both sides by h, so I have 2a over h equals just b1 plus b2, right, because I just get rid of that. And now finally, to solve for b2, I just subtract b1 from both sides. And a common mistake here is often people will do like 2a Minus, they'll make that a part of the fraction, but that's wrong because this 2a over h is already a done deal. That's already a number on its own. And whatever that number is, I'm subtracting b1 from that number. And on the right-hand side, I'm done, just left with b2. So that's your final answer, 2a over h minus b1. Finally, uh, this last example here. What if the question here is solve for y? Now, this is a tricky-looking one because most students look at this they don't know where to start because, you know, x is already solved for. And there's a y on the top and the bottom in a way where you can't cancel, right? You can't really cancel the y on the top and the bottom because there's a plus 6 here. So you can't really simplify the right-hand side anymore. 
you can't really do anything with the love. So how do you go about this? How do you solve for why? Well, one strategy whenever you're encountered with something like this, multiply both sides by the denominator. Try to get everything in as linear a form as possible. If I multiply both sides of this by y plus 6, here's what I get. I get x times this y plus 6, right? And on this other side, I get, well, just y. Because I have this term times y plus 6 makes the y plus 6 is cancel. So here I'm just left with this y. Now, well, now what? Well, let's see. The only thing left to do here uh, is to, to distribute this x. So I could say that's xy plus 6x, right? Because this goes to both those, equals y. All right, that looks much easier to solve for. So new day, new question, solve for y in this guy. So now we want to look at each term with the y in it. So looking at this xy term, again, this is no different than some constant multiplied by y. So these two blue underlined terms are terms with y in it, and this one is a term without a y in it. So again, our goal is to get all the terms with the y in it by itself. So, you know, one thing I could do is I could just subtract this xy term, and then just I'll get all the y's on the right-hand side. Again, it doesn't matter which side. You could subtract this if you wanted to, uh, and then subtract this over to the other side. Either way is equally acceptable. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, subtract this xy. So I have 6x left here. In here, I have y minus this xy. So again, I subtracted xy from both sides of this equation. So here I have just 6x left. Here I have y minus xy left. And the whole point of it is now, now that all the terms with the y are on the same side, I can factor out a y. That's no different than me doing simplifying like terms. If this was like y minus 4y, I would say that that's just negative 3y, right? So similarly, this is no different. It's like y minus xy. I take the y out in common and I'm left with 1 minus x. So again, you could verify, you could distribute this to make sure you get the same thing, y minus xy. But now this is no different than some constant times my y. So if some number times your y equals 6x, we'll just divide by that thing, that 1 minus x to get your y on its own. So you have 6x over 1 minus x equals y, and that's your final answer.